Hi guys, let's talk about plug flow reactors and series, which is part of lecture 8, segment 2. Okay, before we talk about this, let's get some insight into something we have said before, which is approximating a plug flow reactor by a large number of CSTRs and series. Remember, it was chapter 1 when we talked about how you can model a plug flow reactor, which is a whole tube, into CSTRs and series. So here we are looking at the physical part of the reactor, the tube itself. Okay, and then we said we could chop this tube into smaller segments. Okay, and then of course every segment you can see that there's an input, there's an output. And these segments are so small that the concentration is uniform throughout the, the segment and the temperature is uniform throughout the segment. Therefore, the rate of reaction is uniform throughout the segment, which means as if it is well mixed. So it looks like a CCR. It has an input, it has an output, and it is well mixed. Consider approximating a plug flow reactor with a number of a small equal volume, CSTRs, of VI in series. So here I refers to the number of reactors. For instance, in this picture it is 5. We want to compare the total volume of all the 5 equally sized CSTRs with the volume of one plug flow reactor for the same conversion, let's say 80%. So let's compare the size of this plug flow reactor to the modeled one, which is after segmenting them and to five reactors equally sized. Okay, and we have here as if they are C stars in series. Okay, so this is how it would look like, correct? Tamam. So what's the common between the one plug flow reactor and the CCRs and series? The one thing which is common that both lead to 80% conversion. That's the duty. Okay, both should lead to 80% conversion. So if you want to look at the size of one plug flow reactor, then definitely it is the area under the curve, starting from zero, right, conversion, 2.8 conversion. However, for the CCRs, it's not area under the curve, it's the area of a rectangle, correct? So for each CCR, we have a rectangle representing its areas, and you should know that the area of V1 equals the area of V2 equals the area of V3 equals the area of V4 equals the area of V5, correct? So somehow all these areas are the same because the volume is the same. But of course, different reactor, different C star will take you to different conversion. Okay, so why is that? Because the rate of reaction at each C star is different. For example, the first C star will take you up to conversion around 35%. However, the last it will uh, the last CCR will take you from a conversion of 0.74 all the way to 0.8 only. Okay, that's only 0.05 conversion to compare to this one which is 0.35. Okay, however they are all equal. So what do you notice when you look at the area representing the volumes? You have interesting observation. Right? So, if you compare all these areas of CCRs to the area under the care for one plant flow reactor, they are almost identical, right? And you can tell, you can tell that the higher number of CCRs, right, the higher number of CCRs, the less these extra areas would be. That means if we divide the CCR, Sorry, if we divide the plug flow reactor into 10 CSTRs, right, instead of 5, then the difference between the volumes will be less. 
right? If we go to more than that, 20 will also be, the difference will be smaller and smaller. So to achieve 80% conversion, in this case, we say we have five CSTRs in series, okay, almost identical to the volume of one plaque flow reactor. As we make the volume of each CSTR smaller and increase the number of CSTRs, that is, if we make the volume of CSTR smaller, then it will be the situation will be closer to the assumption of that it is well mixed and the concentration, temperature, and the rate of reaction is uniform throughout that small segment of CSTR. So as we make the volume of each CSTR smaller and increase the number of CSTRs, the total volume of the CSTRs in series, the total volume of CSTRs in series, and the volume of the plug flow reactor will become identical. And hence we said we can model a plug flow reactor with a large number of CSTRs in series. Okay. Let's go now to plug flow reactors in series. We saw that two CSTRs in series gave a smaller total volume than a single CSTR to achieve the same conversion, right? We have noticed that. When we had a single CSTR, the required volume was around 6.4 cubic meter to achieve a conversion of 80%. However, if we use two CSTRs in series, the total volume was around 4 cubic meter. Is this true for two plug flow reactors connected in series? So will the total volume of two plug flow reactors connected in series, as shown here, would be smaller than the volume of one plug flow reactor? Okay, that's the question we are going to answer today. Okay, so let's look at a single plug flow reactor. Okay, so let's look at a single plug flow reactor when we're we want to achieve conversion of 0.8. So what's the volume? V equals integration of F A naught over minus R A dx from 0 to x. And here x is 0.8, which is similar to the conversion we were intending to get if we use two plug flow reactors in series. So instead of x, I can write x2. That's fine. Both are 0.8. Both are 0.8. Okay. So let's see. Mathematically, mathematically, we can write this term as this. So we can, this is an integration. Okay, the integration can be split into two segments, two parts, two terms. Okay, we can integrate instead of going all the way to 0.8, we can integrate, okay, from 0 to 0.4, and then plus the integration from 0.4 to 0.8. And this is something we know from math. Okay, the integration of here, this term, and this term will give me the integration of this term. Because all what I did, I split the interval. Okay, so let's look at this. This is equal to what? This is equal to V1, right? And let's look to that. This is the integration of FA0 over minus RA dx from 0.4 to 0.8. That is the V2, correct? And therefore, we can see that the volume of a single plug flow reactor equals the total volume of two, CSTR, so two plug flow reactors in series. V1, V2. So V1 plus V2 equals, equals V1. This is not similar to the CSTR, right? Where you have the V of CSTR was larger than volume 1 plus volume 2 of CSTR 
and series. Correct? That was different. Okay, is there any easier way to look at this? Yes, of course. Let's look at the Levinish B plot. Let's look at the Levinish B plot. What does the Levinish B plot say? Well, it says this is the area. This is the area representing the volume of the first plaque flow reactor from 0 to 0 0.4. Okay, and this is the volume represent the area representing the volume of the second plaque flow reactor in series. And it's exactly the same as the volume, right? Which is exactly the same as the area represented by a single plug flow reactor okay so it does not matter whether you place two plug flow reactors in series or have one plug flow reactor the total reactor volume required to achieve the same conversion is identical right let's have an example here example two six sizing the like flow reactors in series. For the previously discussed reaction, calculate the reactor volumes V1 and V2 for the plug flow sequence shown above when the intermediate X is 40% and the final X is 80%. Okay, so let's go to the kinetic data we have and we say that we need the volume for v1 right and v2 so it's going to be the integration of fa naught over minus ra okay dx and that is from 0 to x so for v1 obviously for v1 it will be v1 equals the integration from 0 to point 0.4 Again, 0.4, okay, F A naught over minus R A dx for V2 is going to be integration from 0.4, right, 0.4 to 0.8 F A naught over minus R A dx. One would wonder, one have the right to wonder, is this F A naught the same as this F A naught? Or this if a naught refers to the molar flow rate entering the second reactor. No, that is not true. This if a naught is this if a naught, and likewise this if a naught is this if a naught. Why is that? Because the x, whether in, in equation number one or equation number two, they are both the same. This x is based on this if a naught, right? The new definition of x. Remember? Okay. Excellent, excellent. So let's do the integration. How do you integrate for the first equation? Well, you have these points, but you have these two, these three actually, equally distanced points, okay? Equally spaced points. So that means you have, you can use, you have three points, you have three points, you can use uh, Simpson one third rule, right? And for the second integration, you have from 0.4 to 0.8 again you have here oops not that one but this one and this one three equally spaced points okay for the independent variable so you can also use samsung samsung's one third rule okay when you do this at home okay please make sure that you do this okay you'll get these numbers for v1 you do number integration you get this cubic meter and for v2 this is the volume and if you add them you get this number which is identical right which is identical to one the volume of one plug flow reactor that we calculated earlier which i believe it was an example two three probably Okay, if you want to do analytical integration using that equation that we fit, we'll get these numbers here. Okay, 
Good. So it was very easy to calculate the volumes required for plug flow reactors and series. That's it for today. We'll see you in lecture 9.